Hey guys, welcome back to part two. Continuing on, we're gonna go over some interface overview. We're gonna go over zoom pan, undo, save work, resize images, resolution crop, straighten, things like that. Canvas expand. So let's go over to our Photoshop. Photoshop, this is where we left off. So let's talk about um, more of this interface overview. Uh, so we got our tools over here. We got uh, adjustments that you can make up here based on each tool. Every time you select a different tool, uh, this up here will change. And that will give you a bunch of different uh, variations of how you can use that tool. See, if I go on to Clone Tool, it changes a little bit. If I go to Paintbrush, it changes. Uh, Paintbrush, it changes. It just gives you uh, variations and options within that singular tool. So right now I'm clicking on the Move Tool. So let's get rid of a bunch of these layers that we don't like. How do we do that? We can delete uh, multiple layers. Uh, let's say I don't want... That one, I can press shift and click, click, and now you see that I'm getting multiple layers are selected by hitting shift and clicking, okay? So now I have, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven layers selected right here. At the bottom, there's a trash can. And if I hit that and click yes, then those layers are completely deleted. You'll never get them back. So make sure you're wanting to delete them forever because it's a lot different than the eye. The eye is temporary and the trash can is permanent. So uh, let's see, here's a couple more layers I don't want. I'm going to delete those two and we'll delete these three right here. And again, I just clicked on a layer and I can click shift and click on another layer and it'll select everything down to that layer. So these three are selected. I'm going to hit trash. Goodbye. Now we're just left with, um, by turning on these layers, we're just left with this sphere ball thing. Okay, so that's how you delete layers. All right. Um, Let's go to, uh, undo is really important. I use that quite a bit. And I'm gonna get on a new layer by clicking the new layer tab down here, which is create a new layer, it's down here. Now this new layer one has popped up. And I just want you guys to know that you can draw, and if you don't like it, you can go to edit, step backwards. They don't call it undo. I guess it's called step backwards. So we stepped backwards. I like to use uh, command Z and uh, if you're on a PC I think it's... Um, I'll look that up what's, what it's on on a PC but it's the same program whether you're on a PC or, or, a, or a Mac it's just the keyboard uh, has different uh, couple different keys but you'll figure it out but all these windows are going to be the same so again uh, if I took the paintbrush and I drew something I can undo it by going uh, step backwards and then go to edit undo brush tool that'll also do it okay so that's undo okay and then you can also do the opposite. You can also go step forward now that we've done an undo. So that'll bring it back. Okay, so you got undo and redo, basically. But they call it step forward, step back. And that is under your edit tab up there. Okay, let me get this microphone closer so you guys can hear me a little better. Check, check, one, two. So that's your undo situation. Now, what else do we got? We got zoom and pan. Uh, down here is zoom. It looks like a magnifying glass. 
and you can click, click, or you can hold it down, hold the left mouse button down, and I'm just making an up and down motion with my mouse. Okay? So there you go. There's uh, zooming in and there's zooming out. Very cool, very useful. And then uh, the hand motion. Again, this isn't working as, as it should. But uh, there's got to be a reason for that. I'm not quite... I might have to restart this to get that to operate again. Sometimes, this is an application and you know how sometimes things just stop working and sometimes you need to just restart it. But anyways, the hand tool is like grabbing a canvas that you're painting on and just moving the whole canvas. It doesn't move any layers. Okay. Uh, so, one, let's say you've created your ultimate masterpiece and you are done. You're like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I want to export this. I want to save it as a file. Let's talk about saving the work. Okay, so you've just worked on this all night long and you want to save it. Go up to File, Save. Okay? So when you hit File, Save, then uh, this will come up, and I'm going to just save it to the desktop, which uh, my, and this may look a little different than you, and we're, we called it Test 1. Okay? So I'm going to save that to my desktop. Okay? So what that was, was it just saved the Photoshop file. Now there's a couple different ways, there's not a couple different ways, there's several different ways to save. But uh, if I were to hit save as, which is different than save, because save just saves it as a PSD file where it's got all the layer information, and when you open it up, it's got all the layers, okay? You can do save as. Let's click on save as and see what that does. So save as gives you some different options, okay? Let's say we did a JPEG. So what that's going to do is flatten it into a JPEG. Now when you send it to your client, and they open it up, um, they won't have any of the Photoshop information. They can't uh, make any edits to your layers because they won't see your layers because it's just flattened. you got all those layers, but it's just flattened into one uh, uneditable uh, JPEG. And the cool thing about it is JPEG is you can send that and pretty much anyone in the world can open up a JPEG. You know, it's great for cell phones and things like that. So if I sent a Photoshop file to somebody and they wanted to open it up on the cell phone, they cannot do that. Okay, And they have to have Photoshop to even open it up on a desktop. Okay, So if you want a client to see some work, you send them a screenshot or a JPEG. And as you can see, there's a ton of different options here. You can export as a PDF um, and a PNG. When you save a screenshot, it's saved as a PNG. So let's go ahead and choose uh, JPEG. And let's save that on the desktop as well. So this little option is going to come up. And that is whether you want a small file or a large file. And it will give you the indication of... Um, how large it is. Okay, so if I did all the way down to small, it'd be 125K. If I did it up to all the way, it's at 900K. So um, let's say you were trying to get a file to be uh, within a certain size or weight. Um, and so that's how you're going to manipulate that a little bit. You got a little bit of leeway there. Okay, so we're going to hit OK. Now what that's going to do is save to the desktop, and you can't see my desktop right now, but uh, let me open it up for you, but it's on my desktop right now, and it would be on your desktop as well, and I just double clicked it, and now I am awaiting it to open, and here it is, I'm going to slide it over so that y'all can see it, and there it is, there is your JPEG, that can go to your client, and they can see what you've been working on. All right, and again, it's not a Photoshop file, it's a flat picture. Okay, your client can't make edits on that within the layers or anything. Okay, so there is a way to save a JPEG. Okay, 
Now we're in Photoshop again. I just minimized out my JPEG. Now we're in regular old Photoshop. Let me show you a little bit of something about your image size. So there's a couple sizing situations here. Image size. So if you click image size under, what was that under? I want to be real clear. That was under image and then image size. Then this window pops up. So that's saying that it's going to be 3,300 pixels wide and obviously 2550 in height. Okay? So this little chain right here, this little chain link, means it's going to uh, raise it or shrink it proportionally. If you have it unclicked, be careful because you can actually squish your image and you might change this top one, but it won't change the bottom one. So now you won't have like your nice proportional image. So there's really, uh, I can't really think of a reason why you wouldn't want it proportional, but I would go for that. Now resolution is how many dots per inch you have. And in typical printing, uh, 300 dots per inch is great. And in a web design work, uh, 72 DPI is what the web likes. Okay, so website images, banner images, things like that are going to pop up real fast at 72 DPI and look um, pretty darn good uh, for a monitor. So, why would you want higher resolution if you're printing, let's say, a movie poster or something like that? You don't want to be able to see all the pixels and the pixelization look like a Minecraft game or something. So, <clears throat> if you get some real weird squares or real weird uh, distortion or pixelization, they call it, it's probably because your resolution is too low before you went to print. So, keep in mind, 300 DPI is a magic number in the world of print. Okay, I like that. Okay. All right, what else can we talk about? So... Uh, canvas size. So we started out by selecting an 8.5 by 11 canvas size. This popped up over here. Let me show you. Image, canvas size. Click. Now we have uh, 8.5 by 11. So that's like a printer paper, right? That's the size of that. But if I were to, I can change this canvas size, which is this. Um, white square basically. I can change that. Let's see Let's see what happens. Let's say I make it a little bigger to 15 by uh, 10. Now you'll see that the canvas size actually went bigger and by default it made the background, it made it black. Okay, so if you want a little more canvas you can add some more canvas to it but you will have to go back in to your background layer and select the color you like. Um, one way to do that is to just hit your option button and it'll put, bring up this color selection tool. And I'm gonna left click my mouse. Now my swatch over here is switched to white. And now I can take my paint bucket and I can click into this black area that I do not want to be black and I want it to be white. So left click now. Okay, so now my canvas is much larger and to my exact size that I told it to be. Okay, so uh, another way to change or, or to manipulate your canvas is by just straight up cropping. And then we all would know what cropping is. It cuts the image down, okay? so. Uh, and this, this is kind of like the opposite of enlarging your canvas size, right? Everyone has used this on their cell phone and whatnot, you know what that is. So when you get into the spot you want, you just hit enter and it will crop it down to the size you like. So that's how you crop out, that's how you crop out your ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend or something like that in the family photos. That's how you do that. Um, what else should we, 
Uh, let's see, straighten. So there's a straighten feature here. Um, you can rotate your canvas here like this. Now, one of the reasons you would maybe want to do this, I don't do this myself, but uh, you may like a certain position on a canvas. Now, I, I'm a digital artist, so I draw on a uh, Wacom Cintiq, Wacom Cintiq, if you will, and I draw with a digital pen, okay? And so in Photoshop, I would select my uh, paintbrush tool and I would select a color that I want. <clears throat> I put my brush down and I can draw. Okay. And if you're into digital arts, you might want to think about getting a tablet because there's just things that you cannot do with a mouse, such as go thick to thin, like I just did. You can only do this with a stylus. Okay, so I'm pressing just a little bit and harder and harder and harder and you see that that changes. So the point of uh, rotating the canvas might be maybe I, maybe I feel better doing some shading like this and it comes out better. I don't know. My Cintiq itself also swivels so I really don't have a need for, for that uh, rotation. But you may have a need for that. Okay, so um, if you want to learn more about the uh, Wacom products, go to Wacom.com, which is uh, W-A-C-O-M, and they're a killer company out of Portland, Oregon. Um, well, actually, they're master factories, Japanese, but killer, killer uh, product if you want to get into real deal photography or real deal uh, digital illustration. And most everything is painted nowadays on these. Um, so all your cars are designed on these um, digital drawing tablets, all your comic books, or most of your comic books, um, digital paintings, everything in the Marvel movies, all your special effects. Uh, I rarely draw um, on a pen, uh, on paper and canvas anymore because I can just large format print it and paint it digitally and get a this similar effect. So uh, it's really changed. Photoshop and these uh, digital drawing tablets have really changed the world for art and photography. Okay, so we went over uh, the a little bit more on the interface. We went over a zoom and, and pan and we went over undo and redo, which is they call step forward and step back. We went over resizing the image and cropping and uh, canvas expansion. So uh, let's see, let's, let's call that for now on Photoshop and I think we're gonna switch over into Illustrator. So let's uh, have you wait up for the next tutorial that'll be coming up here in a second.